All right, guys, got a little bit of time. I charged the gimbal up enough to try and do this. We are going to talk about that knife that I should have done a fucking video about two weeks ago, but things happen. This has been a cramped two, almost three weeks now. Um, I'm really hoping that the trip paid off because I'm about to make another one. And just to give you guys a heads up, if it happens that this does help, um, the trip to, to Blade West, which was, I met some amazing fucking people. I got to meet Melissa Backwoods. I had talked to her previously. So you guys see that video we were talking about the knife. She and I had talked back and forth uh, a couple times on Instagram. She saw pictures of the neck knives I had done and really was kind of interested. I sent her a DM. We started to open a dialogue. I told her I would try to get one made for her, but customer stuff comes first. I do know I'm way behind on making knives. I do know that. And so I don't want you guys to think I'm another Apollo. Um, they're in progress. It's just, there's sometimes you get, you have the greatest of intentions to get to the shop and start grinding. And you get there and you realize the second you try to address that grinder, it's just not going to happen. There are times you just, it's not going to happen. It's just, you've got to be just right. Uh, especially hand grinding. Like, Paulo's got no fucking excuse. He's using a goddamn CNC. But to hand grind things, you if you're not using a jig, you got to be in the right mindset. And it unfortunately has not been good lately. I've gotten in and I started to grind something and it just went to shit. So anyway, let's get this. Try to, I will try to play around with the intro video music, uh, but I don't control that. I don't control that audio anymore. Uh, the audio volume, so that you guys know, when I put up the video, the way I'm changing the audio is I strip the audio out of the intro completely because it was filmed with with music and saved with music. So I apologize. But that's not here nor there. This is what we're going to tear into. I really do like this knife. Extremely attractive knife. So. Let's take a quick look at it. I'm probably gonna get grease all over it because I filled a syringe with TW25 Bravo because I have a handful of washer knives that I'm gonna take care of. We got here is a, it's a Tuyak, Tuya, Tuya knife. This is Tuya knife. I'm not 100% sure who's producing them. It feels like a Wii. It does feel and look like a Wii spacer. So th I, this might be being produced by Wii. I do believe that this is being mass produced by either Wii or React. I'm pretty sure this is Wii. This feels and looks a lot like Wii's work, especially when you look at the that little puzzle piece. Ah. Uh, lock bar insert. So could be a React because it also, the thing is because it's completely hidden. So really, really interesting finish. M390 blade with a fuller, both sides fuller. Um, Nice thumb ramp, nice design, more towards a traditional Tonto than Americanized Tonto, but still it's got that that really steep transition. Uh, if you watch the video at, at Blade Show, I geeked out with James Williams uh, about that because you know I've taken Japanese bladed arts and things like that. The guy's amazing. He's an amazing, amazing guy. Super, super nice. Uh, but yeah, so still kind of the Americanized Tonto, full titanium construction, titanium milled pocket clip, backspacer, got a large lanyard hole, jumping on it, some jumping on the spine. But we're gonna turn around and we're gonna take a look at it because it is attract. It is very attractive, and I apologize for the lighting, but the uh, to quote AVE, the Empire of Dirt. I can't film out there. It's a mess. I, I don't want to take the time to clean it up. So I've got other stuff I'm trying to work on today that does not involve actual sharpening. So hang on just a second. And we'll get this flipper. So as I was saying, I was doing a little bit of TW25 Bravo here. It's really hard to use in the tub, but if you get one of these uh, for oral use only, don't use the for anal use. They, they're dirty. 
Uh, they're like the recycled water in the airport. <laughs> so let's take a quick look at this. This is got grease all over it because I got TW25 Bravo synthetic grease all over my hands. This is very well done. You've got milled 3D contoured handles. Nice single-sided pivot. Uh, I didn't. I did take this knife apart. It's not hard to take apart. Reason it got taken apart is it needed a bit of a sharpening notch. So I went ahead and I added pretty much a full finger choil into this, as you can see. Um, it. It came, that came clear back to about here. It was really hard for the customer to sharpen. I did not sharpen this. The customer um, has a, I believe he says he's got a KME. Not tea bag of a job there, fellas. Um, he did a pretty good job. It's nice and sharp. It's just not, it's not the kind of edge I prefer, but you know, hey, it's the customer's knife. Um, like I said, nice fuller M390 blade. I'm not seeing any. So this is the DW1 Envy by Tuyak Knife M390. That finish on that handle is amazing. It is extremely comfortable in hand. Not too big. Even, I mean, you can see it's not a full, full hand knife for me. A lot of knives that I carry stick out. Let's see. What have I got? What do I got in my pocket? I know I got something that's big. Um, so, I mean, not too, not too small, nice and, nice and thick. What, what happens when you get a, 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 a when it's shorter and narrower, um, you kind of have to account for it with thickness. Isn't that right, ladies? So, <laughs> I am in a good mood, guys. I am in a good mood. You're going to start seeing a lot more humorous comments in the videos. Uh, 3D mill pocket clip. It is not too tight. That's a lot of times my contention. It's a lot like this one that Dave made. Um, it's not got too much tension. I'm not a fan of the, just that that almost triangular or pyramid shaped pinch point uh, because depending on pants it can catch. I did not pocket this. Really smooth action, but not fall shut. So I do believe that I need to, now that I've got it all back together, I do believe that she needs a couple drops of lube. I do believe that is um, all it needs uh, now that I'm completely done with it. Uh, because, you know, I had the blade off and everything got cleaned up. So I'm not sure what that pattern is, but it is, it is very, very nice. I mean, not my style blade, but that's definitely something that gets my attention when you're looking at the handle. Um, not heavy at all, nice and light. Uh, down, when I had it apart, I did see, you can see it there, there's a lot of weight reduction pockets in it. Um, but like I said, overall, really, really well done. First time I've seen one of these. So, I, I like a knife, I like a knife that is smooth, but not necessarily just that fall shut action that can be, it just feels dangerous. Um, yeah, nice shoulder. I did notice when I, when I put it together, all the, all the parts are shouldered. So no matter how crank, how tight you crank this puppy down, um, you are not going to, and I've got it cranked down where there's, there's no play to speak of in that. Yeah, I was pushing pretty hard. And I mean, it's still just smooth action, just needs a little bit of oil. So get this turned back around. I'll talk about this some more. I love, guys, I love when I get stuff in that I don't know anything about. And I get to make my own, not that I don't know anything about. I mean, I can, the construction, all those things, that's, I mean, it's pretty much ubiquitous with, and, and, and crosses the lines on all knives. Construction on this knife, not any different really than this knife or any of the other knives that I usually would carry. Um, my poor, this one, I mean, it's pretty much, construction is pretty much standard across knives. It's just the, the level of competence put into it. But I like when I get something that I've never heard of. I've never seen any opinions about it. I've never seen anybody complaining and saying, oh, these problems and things like that. I'm not, I love when I get something and I get to form my own, 100% form my own opinions of something. So I appreciate it, guys, when you send me stuff and you want me to review it. Sir, 
He told me not to call him out in the video, but I, I'm not, I apologize for having it for so long. Um, I'm gonna oil it, I'm gonna get it out this week. I have stuff that has to go out this week. I got stuff that's gotta go to Ireland. I got stuff that's got to go to, Chris Anstey, if you're watching, your stuff got buried under some stuff. I forgot I even had it. It's in a box, it just needs an address. So, um, one other thing that happened. Hold up just a second, I'll go get them, guys. I'll show you exactly what happened. This happened. From now on, guys, until I run out of these and I go completely bankrupt and broke, <laughs> From now on, it's going to come with a crazy sharp shipping label. Because it's business. It is a business and it should, everything about it should be done. I want to do it as professional as possible. This is no joke. I don't want this just to be like some fly by night guy that has an LLC that wounds up shuttering it. I want this to be a thing. So, um, God damn, you guys have made it. You guys have basically made it for me. Uh, so, um, it was amazing being at Blade Show. So we're going to go into this now. I'll just go ahead and do this. This is like, I know I did a wrap up at the end of the YouTube video. I know I did the Blazano video thing, but what I wanted to say, it was, it was utterly amazing. The folks that did know me. Um, like I said, Elijah Isham knew me. The guys at the Wii table already knew me. Um, some of the guys were there, a couple of guys at the Benchmade table knew me. One of the guys there was awesome. One of the guys there was awesome. Guy at KC Knives, uh, I believe, knew me, if I remember correctly. Um, Mark Begg and I, he didn't know me, but when we got to talking, I was showing him stuff I'd done, and he's like, "That's how the fuck did you do that? Same thing at the Microtech table. And just high-level knife makers, and just showing him some of the things that I've done with sharpening, and not necessarily knife making, refinishing. Um, that, that, red, that red DOC... Uh, Jake was, you know, he was, he was, I told him, I was like, you know, I'll show you this, but you know, I know I voided the warranty and shit, but, uh, and he looked at me and he was like, I don't give a shit about the warranty. That's so sexy. It looks like a Sith Lord. And so then I showed him the one I did with the green ceramic and he was like, who'd you have do this? And I was like, I did it. And he goes, but no, where'd you send it off for the coatings? I was like, no, I did the whole thing, Jake. And so... Just those things, uh, just those things about the show, I, I was just completely taken aback by one, recognition, and two, showing people that make amazing knives, things that I've done to knives, and, and they're just, they're like, how'd you get that color? And I'm like, I, you know, I did it myself. It's a ceramic coating. It's not a secret. It's not like it's a trade secret. So it's, Amazing, and like I said, this YouTube channel is 100% where it all started. It all started. I My first video, I didn't even know how to edit. It got cut short, and so I put up a second video because I didn't even know how to edit the two together to publicize that I had a sharpening service that I was willing to start taking money to sharpen knives. And that's been almost three years ago. And now here we are three years later, and I've got about 1,000 subscribers a year now and it's going faster and you know and i have i am surprised at the folks that know me and like i said those of you that were there for the first couple videos you started this if it had not been for the support of you my core subscribers the folks that have been subscribers for my channel for the last let's say two and a half years because i don't remember exactly how long it's been this wouldn't have happened if it had not been for you. I wouldn't have went to Blade West. I would have went, but it would have just been like, I got to take a day off from, from my job that's killing me, as opposed to, I'm going to take my business to there and show people what I'm doing. And, you know, Leon Ma, I talked to Leon Ma, and he was talking about, hey, guys, get my knives, and there's that little corner where it's that little triangle where I can't sharpen it. How do you, how do you as a sharpener deal with that? And I tell him, well... You know, I, I give them warning ahead of time that there's only so much I can do because then you'll get this weird shouldering where, where it rubs up against the stone and it's gonna, it's gonna start to form its own groove up against that and it can be a detractive. So a lot of times, I told him, I showed him this one and I was like, a lot of times I just take that material out and open it up a little bit and then I sharpen it and then I send it to him. And he's like, <laughs> Leon Ma, 
uh, it's like Larry. So Larry told me, he's like, um, Leong Ma looked at me and he goes, that sounds like a lot of work. How about I just send them to you? Can I get your card? That was the whole point of the trip. And, and to get that from, from like Leong Ma. And then I showed, I showed Dave Dang my, he didn't know who I was until he saw this because I've sent him pictures of this through the, there's been transitions of different colors and re-anodizing things and changing that and sharpening. And I've so, I've documented it and sent them to him in DMs. And the second I pulled this out of my pocket, he's like, that's you, you, there was a recognition. And he was like, this is my favorite. And then I, I found out later he was talking about, this is his favorite Horizon D. Like this is his favorite model he's made, but this one is his favorite. That's what he was trying to get across, but his English isn't great. And I was like, oh, wow. But he, once he saw this, he knew who I was because I've DM'd him a bunch of times. So I was just really happy to get to meet him. Um, Dave Deng is an amazing guy. Um, there's a backspacer sitting over here that I have misplaced again. Um, there's a backspacer sitting over here that, that Dave cut for a customer because I told him I was coming to pick it up. And so he didn't have any, and he had one cut out the day before he left for China, or from China. So, guys, that's it. That's it, I'm gonna drink this coffee. I'm gonna start doing the all the work to set up my daughter's thing. You guys will see that video. Uh, or you probably already have seen that video. So, yeah. All right, guys, that's it. Take it easy. Can't tell how much, I, this is, I'm still on that, I'm so happy about the show, but. I've got, I've got stuff I've got to do. I'm probably not doing any sharpening today. It's, I'm going to take this as another rest day. But all right, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Sorry, guys, I lied. I found the backspacer. Brand new backspacer. Brandon, I wore this around my neck <laughs> for like two days. All day at the show, and then I forgot to take it off, so I wore it all day yesterday. Your backspacer is right here. So oop, let's not drop it. Brand new, right off the machine. Yeah, you guys know. See you next time.